geometric sequences. Now, with a geometric sequence, we don't add to get to the next term, but we multiply. That's why it's known as a geometric sequence. So we're multiplying something to get to the next term. And we can see clearly that we're multiplying by 3 in this case to get to the next term. But we can find that one there, which we call R in this case, and that's to get the second term, and we divide by the first term. Or we can get the third term, and we can divide by the second term. So that's how we find our R. Our A is still our first term. And of course, A being the first term, R we call at this time the common ratio, because it's multiplying. Example 18, from the 10th term of the sequence 2, 6, 18, etc. So we know our A equals 2, and I can work out my R by doing 6 divided by 2, you don't need to show those steps, which equals 3, and 18 divided by 6 is 3, and so on, so you can work that out. The rule is Tn equals A, R to the N minus 1, we want T of 10, so we've got 2 times R, which is 3, and 10 minus 1, now I'll just write it as 10 minus 1 here, we can just work that out, it's 9, we'll need to get out our calculator, and we end up getting 39,366. Again, I'm not going to write it, I'll just leave you to do it. Okay, it says for a gene, example 19 for a geometric sequence, the first term is 18, so there's our A, fourth term is 144. Find the common ratio, so we want to find R. So again, we know our A is 18, we know our R equals 144, and we know, sorry, not R is 144, we know T of 4 equals 144. So using the rule t of n equals a r to the n minus 1, we can substitute t of 4, which gives us 18, times r, 4 minus 1 is 3, and we know that's going to equal 144, because they tell us that. Divide by 18, we get r cubed equals 8, and therefore r equals 2. So the common ratio, which I'll write this one here, the common ratio is 2. Example 20. For a geometric sequence through 36, 18, 9, the nth term is 9 and 16. Find the value of n. So we know t of n equals 9 on 16. We know a equals 36. And we know that r equals ends up being a half. So again, t of n equals a r to the n minus 1. We know that it's going to be t on 16 equals 36 times a half to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so we can do a number of things here. We can either work it out on the calculator or we can just go ahead and uh, solve it automatic, uh, manually. So we'll get rid of the 36 first. We're going to get a half to the power, that's a half, to the power of n minus 1 will equal 9 over. 576, which is just going to be 1 on 64, that's what a half to the power of n minus 1 is. I'll continue it along here. So, because that's a half, I will get this one as 1 to the power of, you know, so it's a half to something, so I get a half to the power of n minus 1 equals 1 over 2. Now, the power of 6 gives me 2 to the power of 6 is 64, so I know m minus 1 equals 6 when we equate, and we get n equals 7. So I can work that one out. Example 21, the third term of a geometric sequence is 10, so I know t of 3 equals 10, and the sixth term, t of 6 equals 80, find the common ratio and the first term. So again, I'm going to use the rule, a r to the m minus 1. And you can already guess where I'm going to go. T of 3 will give me A, R, 3 minus 1 is 2, and that's going to equal 10. So there's my equation number 1. And now if I do T of 6, I'm going to get A, R, 2, 6 minus 1 gives me 5, and that's going to equal 80. So I got 2, and I'm going to do equation number 2 divided by equation number 1. So when I divide, the A's will cancel. So r to the power of 5 divided by r squared gives me r cubed. 80 divided by 10 gives me 8. So r will equal 2. 
And now I'm going to substitute that back into the first equation. So sub r equals 2 into equation number 1. And I get a times 2 squared equals 10. So a will equal 10 divided by 4, which means a equals 5 on 2, 2 and a half, whatever you want to write, doesn't really matter. Example 22. Georgina draws a pattern consisting of a number of equilateral triangles. The first triangle has sides of length 4 centimetres and the side length of each successive triangle is one and a half times the side length of the previous one. What is the side length of the fifth triangle? So we know A equals 4. That's our starting point and we know that R is going to be one and a half times, so 3 on 2. So our rule T of N equals A R to the N minus 1. We want to know T of the fifth triangle, so T of 5. We know our A, we know our R, and that's going to be 5. Take away 1 is 4 to the power of 4. And when we work this out, we're going to get 20 and 1 quarter. Again, I won't write it here, so that was part A, but you must write it in words. Part B, which triangle has a side length of 45 and 9 16? So we know our A. That is 4. We know our R. That's 3 on 2. We want to know when T of N, so we want to know our N when we have 45 and 9 sixteenths. As you can see, I always go back to the wall. That's my rule there. And this will equal 45 and 9 on sixteenths. Substituting my A, I get 4. R on 2 to the power of N minus 1 will equal. 729 divided by 16. I right, get rid of the 4, so divided by 4, I end up getting 729. 16 times 4 is 64, which equals 3 on 2, making it the same base as the previous one to the 6. So Therefore, I get n minus 1 equals 6 when I equate. So I get n equals 7. Compound interest. Okay, compound interest is using this geometric stuff. Because what happens, we've got our initial amount, which is our 100%, and we add an extra bit, in this case 10%, because it says invested at 10% per annum. So every year it's going to go up. As you can see, we've got our start, another 10%, and another 10% of that one, and so on and so on and so on. So we have an initial value of A, we've got our R, and we got our R by using the original 100% plus the extra that we're doing. Example 23, Marta invests $2,500 at 7% per annum, compounded annually, find the value of her investment after 5 years. So if we've got, after 5 years we want T of 6. So we have AR to the, AR to the 5, which means we've got 2500 times now 7% on top of what she had so she's got the 100% plus another 7% she's, she's got 107% which we write as 1.07 that's what that happens to the power of 5 and when we work that out we get 3506.38 part b how long will it how long it takes her until her investment is worth ten thousand dollars so we've got we want to know t of n our n when we have a r to the n minus one equals ten thousand oh we know our a twenty five hundred our r we already know one point zero seven to the power of n minus one and that has to equal ten thousand divide by that twenty five hundred gives us one point zero seven to the power of n minus 1 or equal 4. Now the only way to do this is to take log 10 of 1.07 to the n minus 1 and log 10 of 4. The n minus 1 now comes at the front and the log 
10 of 1.07 to do two steps so once because that one that comes out the front the m minus one is going to be times in we're going to bring it over and divide it i'm going to do two steps at once you're still going to need your calculator you can do solve here instead of this so you get n minus one will equal log 10 of 4 divided by log 10 of 1.07 and then when you work all this out on your calculator and add the one, you're going to get approximately 21.49 years. Geometric mean. Again, like the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean is defined as the square root of that. Okay, if, the, if they're positive numbers, then the geometric mean of C will equal the square root of AB.